Hi, I'm Laura, the fiber artist behind Sunday Morning Knits, and this is my channel where I talk about my knitting, spinning, and crocheting, and I guess all sorts of fiber arts journey. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to podcast number eight. I am so, so happy to be here and very excited to film this episode because I have some very fun updates. Uh, one quick note, I'm so sorry about the weird lighting. It is very um, moody and rainy here in LA today. So I do not have the greatest lighting to film, unfortunately. Oh, here comes a cat. There's a cat. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I love her very much. She's uh, bonking the tripod. So I'm sorry if the camera's shaking a little bit, that would be because of my cat. Okay. So I have some fun um, updates today, uh, as well as a couple finished objects and some whips that I completely forgot about. <laughs> so I will be sharing all of those. I will also be talking about some acquisitions at the end and my next knitting plans. I have two different knits planned as my next knits, but I'm only going to share one of them because I haven't fully decided when I'm going to cast on the other one yet. But stick around for that if you are curious. Let's jump in. So I have two and three, sorry, three and a half finished objects today. Again, sorry about the camera shaking. That would be the cat. Uh, my first finished object today is the sweater that I am wearing. So I am wearing my Yoon sweater by November Knits. I talked about this at length in my last podcast, but it wasn't a finished object then because I had not yet decided if I wanted to lengthen the body. Uh, if you watch that podcast, you'll remember that it was completely blocked, but I had the split hem on try on tubing because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. In the end, I decided to lengthen it. I lengthened it by three inches. I will put in a picture here of what the final sweater looks like. I have not actually blocked the like bottom hem of the sweater yet. Uh, so it does look a little bit different from the rest of the sweater just because I got really excited as soon as I finished it and started one, started wearing it because I really wanted to. Uh, so yeah, I haven't blocked that yet, but I'm all done this sweater and I'm so happy with it. I think it turned out so well. I'm not usually a fan of raglans because I have really, really sloped shoulders. I don't know if you can see. No, this, actually, this sweater actually kind of hides it, but I find that raglans often um, over accentuate my very very sloped shoulders because this line here kind of emphasizes it follows that line of my sloped shoulders but I think the sweater turned out really really well I find it does not emphasize that and I think it's partially because of the thick folded over collar it kind of breaks up that um sloped line of my shoulders a little bit and then this emphasizes kind of the width of my shoulders instead of the like slanted nature of my shoulder muscles. So I really, really like that. I think that turned out really well. I am a fan of the really long split hem as well. Like I mentioned, I lengthened it by three inches, so it comes to just below my butt um, in the back, which I really like because then I feel a little bit more comfortable wearing it with like leggings if I decide to go out in public uh, or even just lounging around at home. It's nice and comfy and gives me a lot of warmth. This is also a feature that I'm a big fan of for really cold climates. Uh, where I come from and where I did my undergrad and my masters, it often hit like negative 40 degrees Celsius, if not colder in the winter. So having that length to cover your butt of a wool sweater is really, really nice and will keep you nice and warm during those really, really cold snaps. Now, I obviously don't live in a cold climate right now. It's actually too hot in LA to be wearing this sweater right now but I love it so much and I really wanted to wear it for the podcast, so I am suffering through the heat of that. Uh, but I do hope someday to move back to a colder climate because I think that's where my cold Canadian heart belongs, is in a cold climate. Uh, I don't think I'm built for the heat whatsoever, so a lot of my knits are cold weather themed and cold weather related because I do hope to move back to a colder climate someday. But in the meantime, I just wear the knits and suffer through it anyway. We had like a slightly colder, by LA standards, day on Friday. It's Saturday, so I'm filming this. Yeah, it, today is Saturday. This video will probably go up Sunday. 
Uh, but on Friday, we had kind of a colder, colder day. So I wore uh, this sweater and a pair of my hand knit socks to school. And I recently got clear rain boots <laughs> so that I can like show off all my cute socks. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I was very, very warm. And I think at one point I did have to take my sweater off, but totally worth it. It was great being able to wear it. I got a lot of compliments on how cute my sweater was. I think the only thing I have left to do besides blocking the bottom hem is sewing in a little tag at the very back. I have um, some tags that say handmade by Laura and some sweater tags from Toy and Horn that say um, hand knit stay warm. So I haven't decided which one I want to put on my sweater yet, but I'm definitely going to sew one of those in tonight, I think. So that is what I'm wearing and that is my very first finished object. My next finished object was I believe a half finished object in my last episode. I have notes, let's see. Oh, I didn't say, okay. Well, either way, the very first finished object is my basic sock with the Paisley Knits January Club yarn. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Oh no, what has the lighting done? Come on. No, it's not gonna, it's not gonna focus. Sorry about that. But this is the January Club Yarn by Paisley Knits. This is from the book club, um, Yarn Club. So this set was inspired by A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is one of my favorite series. I'm actually rereading re A Court of Mist and Fury right now because that's my favorite book in the series. And it just makes me so happy and brings me so much joy. I haven't read a book in so long because grad school is crazy uh so being able to knit and work on a sock while listening to that book has been so lovely and it was so much fun knitting with this yarn I just love the way it turned out if you're curious for more of my thoughts on this check out the previous episode I don't want to spend too much time talking about this yarn because I talked about it extensively in the last episode so yeah this is my first finished object. I'm not going to show you the second one because they're the same. And there is a different sock on my second sock blocker. This is my half finished object. So this is the February sock set by Paisley Knits. This sock set is inspired by Percy Jackson. Uh, the main colorway is called Son of Poseidon and the contrast color is called Seaweed Brain. Now I absolutely adore the Percy Jackson books. They are the reason that I got into Greek mythology and ended up doing a master's and undergrad in classics. So once I found out Paisley Knits was going to be doing Percy Jackson as the February club set, I was so excited and knew that I was going to cast that sock on as soon as possible. So both of these are just a basic sock pattern that I drafted. Uh, it's kind of based on the patterns, basic fine sock pattern uh, but it's modified to fit my foot best. Uh, I don't know if the Patton's basic fine sock pattern is still still available. I got that pattern about 14 years ago and knit it so many times that I memorized it and I've changed it so many times since then. Um, but I, So I have no idea if it's available. If you're interested in the basic sock pattern that I use, my own adapted basic sock pattern, um, let me know. Maybe I'll write it up into a pattern and post it on Ravelry. Uh, the only difference between these two socks is the cuff. Uh, will you, will you go back to normal lighting? No. Okay. I think this is the closest that you're going to get. Maybe I'll add some B-roll in. Uh, but the only big difference between these two is this one has a one by one twisted rib and this one has a two by two rib on the cuff but otherwise they are the same. I'm currently working on the second one of these, so that is one of my whips. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. I think it's so cute. This is not normally a color combination that I would uh, reach for, especially because it's quite low contrast. Um, one of the big things that I really like between both of these is this set uh, is much higher contrast than this set, which I think is really interesting. I've never seen a sock set this low contrast, um, and I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried, I guess this is kind of blending into my whip section, um, that I'm going to run out of the contrast color for the toe because I nearly ran out of the contrast color for the toe on this one. And I have like the tiniest little ball left. So we shall see if my second sock matches this one uh, perfectly. If it doesn't, I will not be heartbroken whatsoever. Um, 
just like this one these are knitted on 2.25 millimeter needles which i believe is a u.s size one it is fingering weight it is the paisley knits uh book club yarn club for 2024. do i have any other notes about this no i do not so yeah finished object and my half finished object i'm very excited i love socks they're just so much fun to make they're so peaceful so enjoyable and I have knit 400 million pairs of socks in my life so they take pretty much no brain power from me um which I very much enjoy because sometimes you just need that popcorn knit uh I tend to knit in some of my lectures especially the classes that I TA because I generally know the material already um but I want to like stay focused in those classes and if I have my computer out I'm just going to be searching on the internet and like shopping because I will get distracted so I knit instead and having that like mindless project is perfect for that so socks are my mindless project I love them they're the best okay and I have one final finished object for you today this is a finished object that I actually forgot was a whip for a while <laughs> uh because I stuffed a whole bunch of whips that like really small whips into this project bag and then just like put the project bag to the side and kind of forgot about it and I recently opened it up and was like oh ho, I have a whole bunch of whips in here that I completely forgot about and they were all pretty small whips and this one was half finished so I picked it up and was like you know what I just want to finish this I just want to get this over with because I kind of want to wear it so this is my third Sophie scarf this is a modification of the Sophie scarf pattern so it is bigger than the actual Sophie scarf but smaller than the smallest sh Sophie shawl I used one skein of DK weight yarn for this pattern this is the little fiber co January cookware club yarn and I absolutely love it when I opened this pattern or when I opened the skein of yarn I was like I am so excited this is probably my favorite shade of blue I know the camera's not picking it up super well right now but this is definitely my favorite shade of blue um the January club was agave but I don't really consider this to be agave here let me get a little bit closer to the camera so you can see I don't quite consider this color to be agave I think of this more as a cornflower blue almost, um, but still absolutely lovely. I think I actually like this more than agave. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love every colorway Little Fiber Co. develops. I think they're all absolutely stunning. Um, I actually have the March Little Fiber Co. Club colorway to show you in a bit that I also love as well. Uh, so I'll show that in the acquisition section. Heads up, if you haven't gotten your March colorway yet, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show that in the podcast and acquisitions, but I'll give you another heads up before I do that. But yeah, so what I did for this was I knit until I was halfway through the skein and then, or almost halfway through the skein, and then I started decreasing. Uh, so I tried really hard to use the entire skein for this project, but I still ended up with like this much left. I thought, I thought I had given myself like just like enough extra yarn to make it to the end of the skein, end of the scarf, but still have like a tiny little safety net. No, I ended up with a really big safety net. <laughs> and by the time I was actually through it and at the end of the scarf, I was like, I don't want to frog half of this to make it even bigger. So this is actually going to go into my hexi blanket instead, which is totally fine. I think it'll complement the um, other colors in my hexi blanket very well. So I'm not crushed that I have so much left over and I am very excited to wear my Sophie scarf. I haven't blocked it yet, uh, so I ha haven't actually worn it out yet. Also, I live in LA, so it's currently too warm to wear this. Um, once I block it, it will get a little bit bigger because it is garter stitch, but I'm enjoying the squish right now. I really like how squishy garter stitch is. <laughs> That's why I actually didn't block my Sophie shawl. But I think I want this scarf to be longer than it currently is, all squished up. So that's why I'm going to block this one. Um, maybe I'll do that tonight. But yeah, I love it. Makes me happy. I love the color so much. Ugh. Little fiber code just makes beautiful, beautiful colorways. I think that is it for my finished objects. I'm actually quite surprised how many finished objects I have this week. Because it's been two weeks since I did my last podcast. 
and I've had so much knitting time. I don't think I'm going to have this much knitting time for the rest of the quarter because I do have another qualifying exam coming up uh, mid-June and it is mid-April. So I don't know if this amount of knitting time is going to stay, but I'm enjoying it while I can. Yeah. Okay. Works in progress. So I mentioned that I found the bag of whips that this was in uh, that I completely forgot about. And I realized that I actually have another scarf in progress that I have been neglecting working on uh, and thought I would mention because I actually have mentioned this in previous um, episodes. This is my L scarf by Creek Cadry. Uh, I normally just knit on this when I'm FaceTiming my best friend um, because this is like just absolute complete stockinette in the round. But I don't want to bring this anywhere with me because I have to keep measuring the ball to um, figure out when I have to decrease for this little point in the scarf. Uh, as I try to like hide my face so you can see the point. I have to keep measuring it. So my best friend and I will generally FaceTime for like four-ish hours and we both knit while we chat. And this is the perfect project because it's just stocking it and then I can like pause and measure because I have my little scale on my desk every once in a while to make sure that I am not running out of yarn and we'll have enough to do the little decrease. This is very special yarn to me. This is Kitaya or Kitia yarn. It is the Alpaca Fingering Weight Sock yarn, which I know is a fairly common brand, but I'd actually never seen it in North America. I picked this up while I was in the Netherlands last summer. I, when I went, I knew that I wanted to pick up like some kind of special yarn while I was there and I picked up a couple different skeins. I went to all of the yarn stores within walking distance of me where I was staying and got something from each of the stores and the store that I went to to get this I actually got two different skeins of yarn from it. I got this darker oh there's roving <laughs> stuck to this. I got this darker gray alpaca and I actually got a lighter kind of cream alpaca as well. Now you will have seen this cream alpaca if you follow me on Instagram because I actually published a pattern with that cream alpaca yarn. They are my Argonautica socks that you can actually find on Ravelry if you're interested. And I knit those actually while I was in the Netherlands, but I brought this skein home with me and I have been holding on to it for eight months without knowing what I wanted to do with it. I started to knit a pair of mittens for my friend but the mittens that I wanted to knit had like a cable running up the back of the hand and this yarn just does not have good stitch definition. So it wasn't turning out very well. And so I frogged those. And then I put this yarn away for a while and I was like, I just don't know what I want to do with this. This is a very special skein. So I want it to be used for something special. And one day I got the email from Kadri about the release of the L scarf. And I was like, oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I think it would be so cute and so elegant and because it's nice and thin with the little point, I get kind of like Scandi girl vibes, Copenhagen girl vibes, Dutch girl vibes from it. And I was like, ah yes, that's exactly what I wanna do. So that's what I've been working on with my lovely Netherlands yarn. But my friend and I haven't FaceTimed in a while because we are both very, very, very busy graduate students. So I haven't worked on it in weeks. I will be working on it again soon because we do have plans to chat. So hopefully, if not for the next podcast episode, definitely the one after that, I will have some progress on my L-scarf that I can update you on. But I thought I would mention it since it is a work in progress that I just completely forgot existed and haven't mentioned on the podcast in weeks. So yeah, that's my L-scarf for you. Okay, um, the next one that I worked on this week is my corner to corner uh, blanket. This is inspired by Emma from Emma C Makes, who is absolutely lovely. I think I've talked about this on most of my podcast episodes recently, and I did a whole video that went up last weekend about my um, blanket works in progress. So I've made a little bit of progress on this one. You can see a couple new rows added. I forgot to put in a little stitch marker where I was last week versus where I am now, but I think I did about this much this week. Um, it's growing, I'm a big fan. It is still kind of wonky on the edges, <laughs> as you can see, but that's okay. 
I'm still learning how to crochet. I'm getting there. It's getting much more consistent, which is all that matters. Um, and most of all, I'm enjoying it and getting to use up my scraps. So that's fun. I am using a three millimeter hook for this. Oh, I forgot to mention the needle size for my L scarf. I'm using a US five, so 3.75 millimeter for my L scarf. Um, yeah, back to my corner to corner blanket. Yes, I'm using a three millimeter hook for this and all of my fingering weight scraps. So that's been a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to have this as an actual blanket. I'm very, very excited. I think it's gonna be really cute. Hmm. Big fan. Okay, my next work in progress that I did some work on this week is my sweet shop blanket. I didn't get as much work done on this blanket as I actually wanted this week. I added this triangle and am in the process of adding the contrast color or the main color, pardon me. And I added this one down here as well. They are the same yarn. Uh, they're both the Demeter colorway by Paisley Knits. And that's just how I had it laid out in my plan. So I thought that'd be pretty easy because they were both the same yarn. So that was nice. Um, but I haven't done any more work on that. Part of it was because I was uh, running at a double Sunday as my um, main color wound into a ball and I was just too lazy to wind it into another ball. So, <clears throat> pardon me, I worked on other things instead. And I have a test knit due next weekend. So that was also taking priority over my sweet shop blanket. So that's why there hasn't been a ton of work on it, but I'm still loving it, still a fan. It's just going very slowly. I am using um, US size six, so four millimeter needles, and this is DK weight yarn, all of the God colorways, but Paisley Knits are fingering weight, so I'm holding them all double. But yeah, that's my sweet shop blanket. If you want more information, I talk in depth about this in my last video and my last podcast. So it's my sweet shop blanket for you. Uh, I have two more works in progress to show you. Now, the first one is a test knit that I am doing for Tamara of Star Crossed Knits. You may have seen this if you saw my last podcast, but there's been significant progress on it. So this is my Tide and True cardigan. As you can see, I've done a whole sleeve. I have this very adorable little puff sleeve. Uh, I have not yet done the other puff sleeve. I just finished this one and then had to put it on pause because there was some discussion about the pattern. Uh, and I'm about halfway through the bust portion of the cardigan. This is due next weekend, so I got a lot of work to do. But that should be fine because I have a lot of seminars this week that I have to attend and that'll be plenty of knitting time. So I'm very excited for that. This is going quite well. I am a big fan of this pattern and how it's turning out. I think this is going to be an absolutely beautiful cardigan. It is completely customizable to your own body, which is the thing that I love the most about it. So right now I'm in the process of adding bust darts, which is something I've never done in knitting before. I've done bust darts in sewing, um, but never knitting. So this has been really cool, but yeah, everything is customizable. So I'm customizing the bust darts to my own bust size. There's instructions for how to do that based on your own body. You can customize arm lengths, arm, sorry, cat, uh, armhole or arm, arm widths. You can customize the length. You can customize pretty much everything about this cardigan, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, and it has been a joy to test knit so far. So I am very excited for this to come out. I don't know when it's going to come out yet, of course, because it's still in the testing phase. Um, but Tamara has done such a wonderful job, such a lovely job, and I think this pattern is going to be well loved by everybody in the knitting community. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's all I can say about this one so far. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. I have never knit with a single strand of mohair before. That has been quite the challenge. Like, getting used to knitting with just one strand of mohair, surprisingly hard. Um, but I do love the drape of this cardigan so it's been worth it but it's been hard <laughs> okay and the last update working I don't know if I can really say this is a work in progress it's more of just like an update that I am so excited to talk about is a spitting update 
I have not done a spinning update in so long. I haven't really spun in a while. I kind of just put it aside because I was busy with school and didn't really have time. But recently I have picked it back up again because I just needed a break from knitting. Like I was knitting a lot and even crocheting quite a bit. Um, and I was like, I would like to pick up a different fiber art. So I picked up my spinning and I think I have improved quite a bit. <laughs> so this is the very first, oh, right, the camera's over here. This is the very first skein that I spun. I realized that, oh, there we go. Oh, are you gonna, wait, hide my face. This is the very first skein that I spun. It's quite uneven. Oh, this isn't the first one. This is the second skein that I spun, not the first one. Uh, this is the second skein. It's quite uneven, um, but they were two uh, singles that I applied together, and I think this came out at sport weight, so I'm really proud of that. Um, yeah, this is the first one. This has been washed and skeined up. It's still... I think it's a little bit ropey. I think I over-twisted it a bit too much, but... Uh, I'm still very proud of it because this was my very first skein. This one I completed several months ago along with this one. This is my second skein. Um, this one I was actually purposefully attempting to do a thicker spin. Uh, I wanted to see if I could spin something closer to maybe like bulky because I was thinking about doing a hat with it and I wanted to see what it was like to spin at different weights. I also used a different spindle than the one that I'm currently using because I have a really light spindle and then a heavier spindle that I got for my birthday. So I wanted to see what it was like to spin on a heavier spindle. So this came out at bulky weight. Again, still quite uneven. There is still a lot of like thick and thin sections of it, but definitely more consistent than this skein. Now, this is the spin that I had on my spindle since I put it down in maybe like December because it's been about three or four months since I spun. Um, I have not washed this yet. So this is just straight off my spindle. Um, but I finished this this week. Oh, nah. is it gonna focus? Not really. Okay, I'll probably just do B-roll. Um, but this is the spin that I just finished. It is just singles. I have not plied this with itself or with anything at the moment. I think I'm actually gonna leave this one as a single because it's fingering weight. It's fairly consistent. I do like knitting with um, single ply fingering weight. So I think I'm going to leave this as it is. This, I think I successfully did not turn into rope, uh, which made me very, very happy. But I think it's going to be a bit too um, unsturdy for socks, partially because it's just a single ply and I don't intend to ply it. Um, but also, like, it was twisted very lightly, so I don't think this is quite strong enough for socks, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet. Um, I might just admire it as one of my very first skeins and maybe, like, hang it on my wall or something. I don't know. But the spin that I currently have on my spindle is one that I do intend to knit with. This is the finest spin that I have been able to do so far. Uh, I will unravel it a little bit so I can show you. This is coming out at basically lace weight, I think. It is the most consistent spin that I have done. Uh, oh, hide my face. <laughs> oh, maybe I have to show my face a little bit to get the light. This is the most consistent spin that I have done by far. Uh, so far I have I've been spinning for about a year and a half now not consistently of course but um, since since lockdown uh, I got a spindle in lockdown and then like started drop spinning a little bit more after that this has been hands down my most consistent spin I'm so sorry it's like popping in and out of focus um, but I'm so so proud of this I actually recently ordered um, or by recently I mean like an hour ago I ordered um, weaving bobbins so that I can put this on a bobbin, uh, finish spinning the braid that I have, because I have about this much left of this top, 
and then I will ply them together. Oh, that's fun. I will ply it together. Uh, I will ply the bobbins together and hopefully have a nice fingering weight that I think will be sturdy enough for a pair of socks, which is my goal. I want to knit socks with my hand spun. So I am very, very, very happy with this. In case you were curious, this is 100% BFL uh, roving in the colorway Paper Roses by Greenwood, um, which is a hand dyed Sorry about the sirens. <laughs> uh, Greenwood, which is a hand dyed yarn company. I'm really loving it. This is the first roving I've ever tried spinning. Um, I have another, I'm drawing a blank on what the technical term is for this braid. I have another braid of roving um, in my stash that I I'm even more excited to spin because I love the colors so much. I was actually inspired by Ariel from Airy Knits for that colorway that I am super, super excited to spin. So I want to finish this braid before going on to the next one. This is like my practice braid. And then I will spin the next color, uh, which I'm very excited about. So, yeah. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I have been hand spinning for a while, um, on and off and very poorly for a while. I'm only kind of seriously getting into hand spinning now. And so uh, as a little gift to myself, I recently purchased the EEW Nano 2. Uh, I didn't want to invest in a big spinning wheel before, or a more expensive spinning wheel before knowing if I liked spinning wheels at all because <laughs> I like hand spinning but I don't know if I'm gonna like a spinning wheel so I recently purchased the EEW now too which should arrive this week and that means I will be able to update you on the next podcast about how that is going and I am so so excited for that I have no words I cannot wait it's gonna be great um, so I'm very excited for that that's my little spinning update yeah it's making me happy I really enjoy spinning um, I wasn't sure if I would, but here we are. I love spinning. It's fantastic. It is just an absolute joy to do. So that is my spinning update. Now, I know that not everybody likes acquisitions. So if you are not a fan of acquisitions, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, but if you do like acquisitions, let's dive into that. So I have a handful of acquisitions. Two skeins are from a pre-order that I did in February, and the other two are my March Club yarns. So let's start with the pre-orders because I am so happy about these. Um, I am a fan of The Princess Bride, <laughs> and I have never ordered from this dyer before, and I have followed them for so long, and I've always wanted to. So when I saw that Long Dog Yarn was doing a Princess Bride colorway, I was like, well, I have to do that. So I ordered two skeins of the Princess Bride colorway from Long Dog Yarn. This one, uh, the main colorway is Princess Buttercup. I cannot remember what the mini is. And this one, the main colorway is uh, As You Wish. And then again, I can't actually remember what this one is. I will pop in some B-roll of these skeins so that you can see them a little bit more clearly. But yes. They are adorable. I wasn't sure. So I am not normally a fan of, maybe not a fan isn't the right term. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of orange. That's, that's, that's safe to say. I'm not really a fan of orange. And this skein has orange speckles in it, which again, I'm so sorry. You cannot see because the lighting is terrible, but take my word, this skein has orange speckles in it. And I saw it and I was like, I don't know if I would like that, but I thought about it for a while and I would scroll through Long Dog Yarn's colorways and I always, always came back to this colorway because it's this beautiful purple on kind of like a cream base with like beautiful sagey greens, purple speckles, and then just that like touch of orange speckle in it. And it's kind of like a rusty orange that goes really well with the purple. And so because I kept coming back to it, I was like, I'm gonna do it because 
I've never seen anything like this before and I just thought it was an incredible colorway. So I had to do this. I am so happy with how it turned out. And of course, pink is my favorite color and the purple is absolutely adorable. So I obviously did this one as well. And I'm very happy that I did because I think it's just beautiful and it's going to make an absolutely beautiful pair of socks as well. Uh, as you know, socks are my favorite to knit. I've already talked about that on this episode. So I was not hesitant to buy several sock sets because I know that I will use them because I love socks so much. So that is my Long Dog Yarn Princess Bride uh, collection pre-order that came in this week. I love it so much. They're so cute. Hmm. Now the other acquisitions that I have are my two club yarns. The first one I'm going to show you is my Paisley Knits Club Colorway. So if you haven't received your Paisley Knits Cl Club Colorway from March yet, you might want to skip this part. Uh, same with Little Fiber Coat because that's the one that's up next. But Paisley Knits Colorway for March, the club set was inspired by uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. Now if you know me, you know that Red, White, and Royal Blue is one of my all-time favorite books. I have read that book about 15 times, I can quote the entire thing. Like I love it so much. And Paisley, Nance, Collie just absolutely knocked this out of the park. The main color is History Home and the blue is uh, His Royal Highness Prince Dickhead. So I just thought the red and the blue was just perfect. And I am so excited to knit this into a pair of socks. I cannot wait. I think it's going to be just absolutely stunning. Again, I'll do some b-roll so that you can see this up close, but oh, I just love it so much. I'm so excited. And now for the little Fiber Co. Club colorway. It is a beautiful thyme green color. This uh, club colorway I'm actually getting in DK because I have so much fingering weight that I was like, let's switch it up a little bit and do some DK weight. So the um, agave they're all DK weight uh, and when I got this I immediately thought baby sweater I absolutely love knitting baby knits even though there are no babies in my life um, they're just so much fun to knit and so satisfying because they're really quick projects and then there's like this tiny little sweater that you have uh, most people would obviously give it to a baby but there are no babies in my life so they're just being stored for later but yes this is the agave uh, colorway and I think it is just absolutely beautiful. Definitely one of my favorite greens. I love the kind of like pale green. I love olive greens. So I think this will go really well with some of the other greens in my collection. Um, but like I said, I think this is going to go into a baby sweater. So I don't know if I'll be adding any other yarn to it, but I'm definitely thinking of a sort of like little tiny green sweater. Oh, but this is non super wash. So maybe not a baby knit because I don't like to do baby knits in non superwash, so actually I will not be doing a baby knit with this. So if you have any ideas for what I can do with this, please drop them in the comments. Um, yes, it's such a lovely green. I am very excited to knit with it. So uh, I have no doubt that I will come up with a project for this quite rapidly, but it will not be a baby knit as we discovered. That's the thought process of a knitter of like, what am I gonna make with this skein? Uh, I'd like to make a baby knit, but then the yarn doesn't match. So you have to find a different project that also matches the yarn. So welcome to the thought process of a knitter featuring Laura and her chaotic brain. <laughs> but yes, this is my March Club from Little Fiber Co. And I'm very, very happy with it. I think it is very cute. I can't wait to knit with it. Also for a non superwash, this is like the softest yarn ever. Oh my gosh, it's just the best. Same with the, same with the Sophie scarf. That's why I knit this into a scarf because I was like, this is so so soft for a non-superwash. It's incredible. I highly recommend it. I prefer non-superwash yarn to superwash um, just because I like how warm it is. Um, and this is so soft. Oftentimes non-superwash is really scratchy. Not this one. Hands down, this is next to skin soft. So Little Fiber Co. non-superwash is next to, next to skin soft if you are looking for that. And I believe that is it for my acquisitions. I have one last thing left to show you, uh, but my cat knocked it off my bed earlier, so I have to go get it. 
I will be right back. As some of you may know, Emma from Emma C Makes is doing a shorty socks knit along that starts on Monday. And I will be joining because I love socks and I love Emma. So obviously I'm going to do that. And this is what I have decided is going to be my combination for this knit along. I am using the colorway Odette by Sorella Makes in the Stellina sock yarn for the contrast color for like cuff toes, that kind of thing. And Perfect Weather by Little Wing Fiber Co. as the main color. So I'm not going to say anything else, but if you are interested in joining the Cozy Socks Knit Along, check out Emma's page. I will link all the details below. And join us on Monday when we cast on. I'm so excited. I think it's going to be so cute. I love this combination. So I think it'll turn into a really beautiful pair of socks. And I will never, ever, ever pass up an opportunity to knit a pair of socks. So that I think is the last thing I wanted to share with you today. If you have made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. I so greatly appreciate it. If you liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I really, really appreciate all of your support, all of the lovely messages and the wonderful community that I have been meeting through doing this on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching along today. Let me know what you have been working on in the comments if you've been knitting while watching this. Thank you so much again. Have a lovely rest of your day and happy knitting. Bye.